Good afternoon, my name is Captain Th Craig Thomason from the Montgomery County Precinct 2 Constable's Office. Uh, today we're here to talk to you about a specific case that came in over the weekend. On Saturday, July the 15th, 2021, the Magnolia Police Department officer located a dog in the 31,300 block of Friendship Lane near the Montgomery County Precinct 2 Commissioner's Barn. The dog had an arrow protruding from his abdomen. The officer restrained the dog and contacted a volunteer from the Montgomery County Animal Shelter. The volunteer then transported the dog to the animal shelter for emergency surgery to remove the arrow. A second wound was found on the dog's hip and appeared to be a through and through wound from possibly a second arrow. The dog's condition is guarded at this time. The dog is described as a pit bull Labrador mix about five years old black with a gray muzzle in emaciated condition. The Precinct 2 Constable's Office is asking the public for its help in this investigation. Anyone with any information pertaining to this case is asked to call 936-539-7854. So since May 15th, no one's come out saying, oh, that's my dog, or I know who, no one's claimed responsibility, no one's given any tips? No, nope. no one has come forward uh, claiming ownership of the dog or uh, responsibility. Can you tell me what that area of Friendship Lane looks like, like where the dog was found? It's uh, basically on the outskirts of downtown Magnolia. And then what kind of reporting goes into this? Because if it's my understanding, this is a case of animal cruelty that ends up getting reported to the FBI, right? Well. Not the FBI. Um, so we here at M in Montgomery County, myself, with the cooperation of Aaron Johnson, we're looking to gain support from the commissioner's court and the county judge this next budget year to start an animal cruelty investigation unit in Montgomery County. And Aaron and I have been diligently working hard to get all the numbers and, and everything together to facilitate a unit that would do nothing but investigate these types of crimes. This is a specialty area that requires, you know, it's, it's a special investigation techniques. What do you say to the person who did this? What would I say to them? Um, if you come forward now, uh, the, the consequences for this action could be less than us coming to find you. What kind of person would do this? I mean, do you think it was a teenager, an adult? I mean, what? What just up your instincts? Well, it is hard to say, but there, there, there is statistics that prove that anybody that can do this to an animal is five times more likely to commit the same crime against a human being. So, a, a lot of serial killers, they start with this type of crime in the beginning. So, you know, I think that speaks for itself, and it's an area of law enforcement that's been unaddressed in Montgomery County, hopefully up until next year. I'm going to ask that similar question the same way just to get a cleaner answer in case that ETS record affected it. But you talk about, I mean, animal cruelty in a sense is a sort of gateway drug, uh, gateway crime into other crimes against people. Yes. Talk to me a little bit about how violent a person has to be to do this and why law enforcement see this as an opportunity for more serious crimes against people later on. Well, I mean, honestly, who could stomach doing this to somebody's pet or to a non-livestock type of animal. I, I myself am a bow hunter. I would never in my wildest dream think about shooting a dog with an arrow. Um, the, the instance of uh, sex predators, child pornography, um, domestic violence, uh, oftentimes uh, dogs are used as weapons in domestic violence against the victim because generally the victim is the one who's the owner of the dog and the crime is perpetrated upon the dog to gain control over the victim. What are you seeing escalating in this? I mean, last week we had a dog shot, week before or, uh, one with uh, darts in his head. What, what are you seeing? I mean, just recently it seems like more cases are coming up like this. Um, I don't know, but I, I, I do firmly believe that it's an area that is uh, under-policed in Montgomery County, which I'm hoping to change in the next budget year. 
And so what's the penalty for this crime if someone's convicted? If nobody has been convicted, if the person responsible for this, for this has not been convicted. I'm sorry, if they are convicted, what's their punishment? First offense is a class A misdemeanor. Um, subject to two to five years um, and fines. After that, um, if they're convicted again, it, it jumps up to a felony. And then leaning in on your expertise, because you said you're a bow hunter yourself. Yes. The type of arrow that was used, this isn't something that just could have, that was a toy that just happened to hit the dog at the right side. Like, how much damage can this type of arrow do? Well, it was a carbon arrow that had a field tip uh, screwed into the end of it. So it was not a broad tip hunting area arrow. Uh, had it been, likely this dog would not have survived. Is, and then really quickly before I go toss it over to Aaron, there is nothing identifying on the arrow that we could put out to the public. Like, if you happen to buy this for somebody or sell this at your store, like, there's nothing unique about the arrow? Um, there is. There's um, there's banker's marks on, on the arrow itself. Um, uh, Saturday when they removed arrow from the dog. Um, they painstakingly cut the end of the arrow off and had the, the fletching or the feathers on it. And I'm going to be sending that to BPS in Austin to see if they can uh, gain fingerprints off of the arrow. But that's basically all we have right now and that's why we're looking for the help from the public. That arrow? Yeah. Okay. Did you search for surveillance video in that area? Did you find anything? We, I have not heard back from Commissioner Riley's office yet because um, that's the immediate area of of his precinct barn that was found. Um, by the looks of the, the dog and the condition he's in, it's likely that he might have been astray. Still no reason to do, do what they did. I'm okay to pass the mic over to Aaron. Uh, or uh, Aaron Johnson, A-A-R-O-N. Last name Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N. I'm the director here for Animal Services in Montgomery County. So when you saw this poor dog on May 15th, what went through your mind and your heart? Uh, first and foremost for us is obviously getting the care that he needed. Um, so as soon as the dog was brought in, we recognized obviously there was a problem, and so we, we got our chief veterinarian, Dr. Washington. Um, from there, the medical team immediately you know, got an IV catheter in him, got uh, x-rays on the dog. We were able to determine that the arrow at least did not protrude through any of the vital organs, such as lung and heart. Um, it was higher up in the chest, and just basically went straight through the tissue with the muscle. And uh, you can see the end of it was actually out towards the front shoulder part. Um, so she was able to make an incision here. And we just basically pulled the rest of the arrow through during the evidence for Captain Thompson to set off. Um, is, it, is it a close call? Like a couple of millimeters to one side or the other? Like what could it have been? It, it could definitely could have killed him. Um, there's no doubt about that. Had it gone down just a couple of inches into the chest cavity, we would have been looking at like a pneumothorax or hemothorax, things like that. Um, collapsing the lungs, um, or even going through the lungs. Obviously, those would be very devastating injuries for a dog. Um, we were just very thankful and lucky, lucky that it did, um, I think, hitting some of the bone structures kind of helped direct the angle of the arrow. And I think that's why he was lucky. Um, but he did have the wounds on the hip area. We think that it was another arrow that went through the skin and tissue of the, of the hind end here. And then you're going to see uh, he has sutures and stuff on both sides. They're doing some wound care and laser therapy to help with that. that most. And as you can see, he's, he's been a sweet dog the entire time. Um, so I don't, I don't know why somebody would do this, but we're just glad that he was able to make it here to the shelter and get the care that he needed. He looks a bit different from the picture. How has he changed in the last several days? I, th I think in the first picture it was the sunlighting because he kind of has that kind of brown coloring to him. So when he's in the sunlight, it kind of looks a little lighter. But he's gained weight. Talk, talk to us about how he's improved. He, he's definitely improved in the fact, obviously, that the arrow's not in him. But um, these wounds on his hip were open. So they were they were very open, as you can see. There were some maggots starting to get into those wounds. Um, from those, we've been able to clean, uh, derive those, get all the, the bad tissue out, and kind of close them up somewhat. They're left open a little bit so that they can drain. Um, but right now, we're just basically going to be, oops, somebody. We're going to be fighting any infections that he may have. Um, obviously, he's on antibiotics and things like that. And then they're going to continue to do the uh, laser therapy on the wounds, which really helps with um, revitalizing the tissue and, and keeping the bad, the bad uh, tissue out. How long did y'all think he had the wound? Probably, it had to be at least be several days. 
Uh, so he, was, was, he was hit before Saturday, May 15th. We believe so, yes. You were, I mean, really riled up. If I could say it casually, you were pretty pissed. I mean, I'm here because of that Facebook post that just ch like tugged at people's heartstrings. I mean, it seemed like the only avenue for you to share your anger. Can you kind of walk me through where you were in that moment that you took to the keyboard to post that? So, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So this, I, previous to this, I worked at the city of Houston at Park. I was there for 10 years. Um, I fought to get the cruelty stuff started there. Major offenders became a thing and they started doing the investigations of the city. Um, so obviously this has been something that I've been passionate about for a long, long time. Um, so I obviously kept that passion when I came here in Montgomery County and we don't have as many resources here yet, um, like major offenders to lean on. And they didn't at work when I first started there too. So it's a, it's a work in progress and working with Captain Thomason, we're very hopeful that we can get something started and set up so that these cases don't just fall by the wayside. Um, but it's just really difficult when you see this not once, but twice, three times, four times. You know, this is not the first time we've seen this. Um, one of the previous times, there was one in the Woodlands with a cat, that different. And then a couple years ago, there was another one with a full-size arrow and a cat. Um, it, it's just unacceptable, and I think we really need to show the, the public that this is not acceptable, and we're not going to accept it. Uh, and there's going to be consequences to the person we have. So this dog survived, the cat uh, in the Woodlands Hills and Palma survived. How often does animal control out here find a dog or cat that hasn't survived, that died from their wounds? Sure. I, I can't give you an exact percentage, but it does happen. Um, we do find animals that with various types of wounds that appear that are not, you know, accidental hit by cars or things like that. They, they appear to be very intentional wounds. Um, so, I mean, it does happen. I don't know the specific stats behind it, but it's something that we really want to be able to put resources towards and really find these people that are doing this kind of thing. Because as he said, these are crimes that lead to other crimes, more serious crimes, more heinous crimes that we don't want happening here in Montgomery County. Are you working on getting a reward together? Has anybody come forward to offer any money up to incentivize folks? We have, we have, I don't know if anybody yet that has stepped forward to do that. I'm not sure. Um, I've not heard of anybody yet. Okay. Okay. This, is, this is our first mention of the case yeah. to yeah. the public. Um, you know, maybe we can work with uh, crime, crime stoppers to get them to carry the story and possibly offer a reward. We'll, we'll check all avenues. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the end <laughs> It's It's been a wild week. Uh, we just got to come up with a good, a good fitting name for him. Um, but from here, it's just going to be that care of the wound care. That's going to be our biggest thing with him right now is if continuing our laser therapy for him, the antibiotic courses and making sure that we don't get any really big, bad infections that are going to be de you know, detrimental to him and think could ultimately kill him if it was really bad. So we, we are very hopeful that he's going to do well. Um, we're probably going to keep him around the shelter for now just so we can continue those laser therapies, but we ultimately want to get him into a foster home, get him well, all those things secured and healed uh, before we try and get him sent off to a, a new forever home. It'll take several weeks for all those therapies? Definitely. It definitely is. And as you can see, he's very still active. Um, he's been very sweet, but... Uh, but he, uh, I'm good with questions. I don't 